it's Claire from the Creative Sparks Club. Today I'm going to show you how to make this super cute felt heart bunting. But here's what you're going to need. You're going to need some colourful felt. I've gone with a selection of pinks and greys for this. You'll need the heart template and the instructions which you can find over on the website. You'll need some light pink embroidery thrill. Whatever colour embroidery thread you need to match your felt your fabric, so you'll need whatever colour embroidery thread you need. You'll need some baker's twine, some scissors, a little bit of stuffing, a needle and a pin, and some and a pencil as well. Okay. The needle's there in the corner. Okie dokie. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get our template, cut that out, so we've got the heart now, and then we will draw it onto a piece of felt just using a pencil. Here are some hearts I made earlier. I've always wanted to say that. Okay. Let's draw all the way around it. Don't worry about any pencil lines or marks because we just make sure they're turned towards the inside when we're sewing it all together. And I've already done one as well, so we'll cut this out. So what we'll do now is making sure those pencil marks are on the inside. We'll just pin those two together. Just stop them from swizzling around. There we go. Okay, and we just need the pink thread. So I've got the pink thread. I've put a couple of knots in the end of it already. And we don't want knots sticking out. So I'll show you how to hide your knots. So rather than just going straight through the back and going through the two pieces of felt together. We're going to go in between the two pieces of felt, so I'm just going there for the first one. And then you can see the knot is now on the inside. And now we can just scooch all the way around the edges, just doing a basic running stitch, which is literally just in and out, making sure you go through both pieces of felt now to sew it together. Okay, so we're just going to stop there for a second now. Don't sew it all around because now we're going to put our stuffing in it. So we've got a little pocket there. Don't tie the thread off, just leave that as it is and grab some of your stuffing. And just pop that through the hole. Push a bit up into that top bit there, a bit more down there. And then just a bit more on this side. You don't need too much, it's just to pad it up a little bit and make it look a bit plusher. How's that? Absolute two more, I think. Okay, there we go. So again, just carry on holding your heart together, making sure you've got no stuffing poking out the top. So just keep hold of that and just follow it. Put some stuff in there. There we go. And just carry on sewing. Now then, same again, we don't want a knot showing on our heart. So that's the last stitch through. Okie dokie. So then what we do, so on the back, you pop your needle in and rather than going straight through to the front, you're going to come up between the two pieces of felt. So you're only putting your needle through the back piece of felt. So pull up through there. Okay. So then you're going to want to tie 
a couple of small knots as close to the inside of the heart as you can get them. There we go. Okay. So then what we do is if we cut that there, we've still got a little knot and a little tail sticking out, which we don't want. So you go back in between the two pieces of felt and poke your needle out through the back anywhere, doesn't matter where. And just give it a gentle. You can usually, you can feel, as you tug that very gently, you can usually feel the knots being pulled back inside the heart. So just give it a really nice gentle tug. But then obviously we now have this bit on the back, which we also don't want sticking out. So what we do is you get some scissors, grab hold of the thread and see how when you pull tightly on the thread, the heart moves, just snip the thread off. And as you straighten the heart back out, that thread just disappears into the back. Okay, so let's get everything strung together. Okay, so for this piece of bunting, I'm only going to use nine hearts. Um, the, the full large piece that I have made that's actually too large to show you in the video is 50 hearts. And that took roughly 18 squares of nine inch or 20, 27 centimeter squared uh, felt. So it's only 18 squares of that to make all the hearts needed for the 50 on quite a long piece of bunting. So we need to decide how we're going to lay these out now. So I want a hot pink at either end. Then I will pop, I think I have a light grey next. You can do these in whatever order you want. You can do them consecutive, you know, so they're all running on one after the other. You can do them like in an arrangement like I'm doing this one. It all depends on how you want it to look. You can also, as well, if you want to do small hearts and have it focusing on a big heart in the middle and small hearts coming up the side, there's loads of options. Okay, so we'll pop the, those two dark grey in there. Does that look all right? Yeah, that looks kind of cute. I like that. And then we'll put that one in the centre. I'm just going to switch these greys around and just see which look I prefer. No, I think the other way with the darker grey next to right. Okay, so that's the order you want them to go in. So if you take your baby twine and a needle, I use a um, thick chenille needle which has quite a large eye which makes it really really easy for threading embroidery thread and baker's twine um, which makes it super easy to sew things together as well so with your baker's twine or your embroidery set however however long your bunting is whether it's nine hearts whether it's 50 hearts whether it's 99 hearts you need to leave approximately three foot or 36 inches um at the end of your baker's twine. That's to give you enough room to tie it up. Um, you could leave a little bit less, but I tend to find when I have done it doesn't fit. So to me, it's always better to have a bit more excess on the end so you've got enough room to tie everything up. So you don't need to put any knots in your baker's twine either. So I'll just undo that a bit more. There we go. So, and here's what we do. Take your first heart. Now, instead of sewing through the heart so you can see the needle popping up. We don't want to do that. We want this baker's twine hidden inside the heart so you can't actually see it. So what we do, and you have to keep hold of the needle and squidge the star at the same time. So you're going to pop your needle in between the two pieces of felt. I'm trying to sort of do this so I can show you as easily, as clearly as possible. Okay, right now I don't just want to push the needle in because I'm going to lose it. So what you need to do is keep hold, push the needle in, but just keep hold of the end and then smoosh, being the technical term, smoosh the heart so you've got the other end of the needle sticking out in between. Make sure it's not actually gone through the felt, it's just gone in between the felts. There we go, perfect. So smoosh your heart so you can feel the needles, then grab the sharp end of the needle and just gently pull it through and then just move that, slide it along. Now if you want, you can put a tiny little knot in your baker's twine as you go along, that's absolutely fine. Um, in fact, I will do with 
this one just to sort of show you I don't need as much ends on this either do I because this is just a demonstration one so what we'll do is let's move it up a bit more there we go so just say a quick knot as close to the heart as possible like that and then you can just pull it back inside and then so you want to do the same on this side then you do this side's messier because I've got a really long piece of baker's twine over here right so you just make an ordinary knot nothing fancy and again get it as close And again, just give that a slight gentle tug. There we go. And that one's hidden as well. So that'll stop your hearts from moving around on your uh, bunting, if that's what you want to do. I don't mind mine being slidable because when you tend to put things away, they get a bit squashed anyway. So if they've uh, not got knots on you, you can just slide them along and do what you need to just to respace them out neatly. So again, we just repeat this now all the way along. So going in between the two pieces of felt near the top of your heart and then poking it through, but keeping hold of it and then smooshing to make that go up a little bit higher. There we go. That's heart number two. Again, just keeping an eye on it to make sure it's so it's poking up through the top there. I don't want it to do that, so it's just a there we go, a little bit of gentle manoeuvrage to get it in exactly the right position. The longest part of the process is sewing up all of your hearts. That's sort of what takes the longest. But it's the sort of thing you can do while you're just sort of sat watching telly at night because it's just running stitch. It doesn't require a great deal of concentration or thoughts. You can just sort of like sit there and do it while you're watching TV of an evening or... Alright, here's another one. Meet myself with a needle. And the last one. That may see that one. I've just managed to go through the felt with it so not a problem you can just slide it off really easily like that and i'll just need to re-thread with the baker's twine there we go okay we'll do that one again as you can see they are at least the really su the super easy to slide on and super easy to slide off. Perfect. And there we go. So that's the last heart on. And now it is that simple. We have our little, I'll just try and make it a bit smaller so you guys can see it all on the screen at one time. We have our little heart bunting which will look good in your studio or office or 
put it in a child's bedroom. Obviously, if it's a small child, please keep it out of reach of the small child. There we go. So yeah, so there we have our little sweet heart bunting all ready to hang. And like I said, you can do small ones, you can do large ones, you can change. You can do this heart really big, these ones small, these ones medium size. You can you can just sort of go all out on it and do as many different size hearts as you can. They look quite cool. So there we go. All done. Sweet for Valentine's Day and this is also handy for other celebrations as well. I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. You can find this and other tutorials over on the website, which is www.clairesalsbystudios.com. And you can also find me on both Instagram and Facebook as at Clara Salisbury Studios and at Creative Sparks Club. Thank you. See you later. Bye bye.